Hello, welcome back to my channel and to today's video in which we have partnered up with Emma Sleep to bring you our latest home project where we decided to make over one of our spare rooms upstairs. Aside from being an occasional dumping ground, we'd done nothing to this room since moving in in September 2021. There was a couple of random pieces of furniture in there, but it was mainly used as Simon's PlayStation room, and he played sat on the floor with a TV leaning against the wall. So we wanted to keep that purpose for the room, but make it more comfortable and also have it double up as a guest room so that we've got somewhere for people to stay. Once we cleared the room of the few bits and pieces that were in there, the first thing I had to do was to prep the walls before painting. So I used some filler to fill any holes in the walls, of which there were quite a few, as the previous owners had brackets and shelves on quite a lot of the walls. I actually removed the brackets a few months ago before we decided to do anything to this room, so that just left me with the holes to fill. Once the filler was dry, I gave each area a sand with some fine sandpaper to ensure that there was a smooth surface for painting. And then I partly unscrewed the electrical sockets and switches, which you'll see being replaced later in the video. But I always paint with the old sockets on and the switches on, but not screwed close to the wall, just so that I can get behind with a small brush to give a nice paint finish. And then if I get any paint on the sockets and switches, it doesn't matter because they're the old ones. Now that the prep was completed, it was time to finally eradicate that blue. Now, it wasn't in any way an offensive colour, it's just very obviously not my taste. And I've always thought that it made the room feel kind of cold and a little bit depressing, if I'm being honest, especially with the dark wood floor as well. So in the interest of trying to keep costs low, I used some of the All Surface Primer by Little Green that was left over from a previous project collaboration with them. We had about a tin and a half of this left, so I figured that it would be good to use this as a base coat to try and cover any of the blue, because it's always a little bit tricky trying to cover either a brighter colour or a dark colour if you're opting for a very light shade, which of course I did. It's worth mentioning that this all surface primer is in the shade Linen Wash, which is one of their off-white shades. It's not the shade that I'll be painting the room in. I decided on a different neutral shade, also by Little Green. And for those of you regulars, it will be no surprise to you that, of course, the colour I decided to go for is Joanna. Joanna is my favourite paint shade of all all time. It's been used in the majority of the house so far. I love the depth to it. I love how it changes with the light throughout the day. And it's just, I don't know, such a, such a calming colour. So as you can see when I'm painting, I start with any corners that I need to get into with a brush and around any edges like sockets and switches. And then I go on to using my roller and I do each wall one by one so that the paint is wet and the brush and roller sections just basically blend well together. You might also notice that I'm not using any decorator's tape like frog tape, and this is because I'm painting absolutely everything in Joanna. The ceiling, the skirting boards, the door frames, and the doors. Now, I personally love the look when everything is the same shade and when it all matches. And when using a light color like Joanna, it works really well because you get these beautiful sort of deep shadows from all of the tone on tone. And the bonus is that there's no cutting in. So you can literally just slap it on everywhere without having to be careful or use tape. I'd also like to add that I have not used tape to protect the floor because that is going to be coming up a little later in the video, so there was no point in wasting tape. Now, something I've been wanting to try recently, or at least in this renovation, is electric blinds. So this project was a bit of an excuse to order one to trial out before buying any larger ones for some other areas downstairs. 
So I ordered this one from Blinds To Go, which is where we've always bought our blinds, even in our previous house. And I've still got all of my favorite fabric samples left over. So for this room, I opted for a thermal blind because our upstairs windows haven't been changed over like the rest of the house. And they won't be until we figure out what's actually gonna be going on up here in terms of structure and all that kind of jazz. And thermal blinds are really good for keeping heat in also for keeping heat out in summer and it gets really and I mean really hot up here in summer because it's basically like a loft so it'll be great to have a blind that can keep the south facing heat to a minimum in the summer as well as keeping it roasty and toasty in the winter. Now, when discussing this project early on, we did debate whether or not to take up this flooring. We wanted to keep costs low, but on the flip side, this flooring was really heavily damaged and warped due to its age. We think this was installed back in the 90s, so pretty old. But as you can see, we did decide that it had to go. We spent a few weeks looking into carpet as a replacement, getting some quotes and some samples. And then we found one that we really liked and arranged a professional carpet fitter to come and fit it for us. Because as much as we both like to get stuck in with DIY, we have had a go at carpet fitting in the past and it well, it didn't go well, so now we know to stick to the pros. Once the painting was done and the carpet had been fitted, it was time to start bringing in the furniture that we've been collecting over the last couple of months. So because the ceiling height is so low in here, we bought a relatively low bed so that it wouldn't feel cramped and like the bed was dominating the space. We have this same rug in our bedroom and it is so thick and delicious to sink your feet and your toes into it when you get up. And despite the fact that we've now got carpet in this room, the addition of the rug just makes it feel mm, extra cozy. Now, as this room is doubling up as not only a guest room, but also as Simon's PlayStation room and another room with a TV, I did think it would be nice to have a cozy chair in the alcove by the window. Whilst the head height of this room isn't great, it is actually a decent size in terms of floor space. So we have ample room for additional pieces of furniture. This chair was from one of those companies that supplies sofas and chairs in a box and you simply pop it together when it arrives. Now the bonus of these companies is that delivery is fast, often next day, unlike made to order sofas and chairs, which can be anywhere from about seven weeks. So if you are a little bit impatient, then it's worth a look. And they're also great for moving. So perhaps if you're a renter and you move maybe more regularly than others, then it's really good because you can take them apart and they're so much easier for transportation, especially if you self move. Now, this is a guest room after all. So we want anyone staying with us to have a really, really, really good night's sleep. In fact, I might introduce comment cards. And I had heard glowing reviews about Emma mattresses, and they're also recommended by Witch as a Best Buy item. So I'm thrilled to be working with them for this project. We've got lots of friends and family members that would potentially stay with us, and I can imagine they'll all be different types of sleepers, which is why we thought an Emma mattress would be ideal because they're suitable for all common body and sleep types. So it's a great all rounder, and to be honest, it's a bit of a guest room fail safe. We've gone for the original Emma mattress, which has three different layers of pressure relieving foam, including one layer of halo memory foam, which basically adapts to your body shape to give you targeted spinal alignment. The top layer of foam has been designed to regulate your temperature and optimize breathability. And this does this by absorbing and then evaporating sweat. So basically, if you sleep with a furnace, or maybe you are the actual furnace, the rise in temperatures won't affect your sleep or your partner's sleep. 
Now you get free shipping and returns with an Emma mattress. And as you can see, the mattress arrives in a box, which is handy dandy, because if like me, you like to be a bit independent and sort of just get stuck in with a project, it's easier to transport a mattress in a box to a room, especially if it's upstairs. Once I rolled the mattress out, I then left it for a few hours so that it could inflate to its full size. Now, if you struggle to find a mattress that's right for you, you can actually sleep on an Emma mattress in the comfort of your own home for 200 nights and at no risk at all. And then after those 200 nights, if you've decided that she's a keeper, then you've got a 10 year warranty on the mattress core. So for anyone who is interested in an Emma mattress or any of their other products like pillows, duvets, toppers, they even have a weighted blanket, which looks amazing. Their winter sale is currently on with up to 55% off and little extra nugget for you. You can get an additional 5% off the sale prices with my personal code, which we're gonna pop on screen now, and it will also be down below in the description box. Right, once our new Emma mattress had fully inflated to all its glory, I could then start to dress the bed to give it all the guest room vibes. I've stuck to neutral bed linen as per usual, there's nothing new here. It's very much the calming and relaxing color palette that we have throughout the rest of the house. Now, as it's winter, I've dressed the bed with a 10.5 tog duvet and then layered a bedspread over the bottom portion of the bed. And then I'll probably change that up in spring for something a little bit lighter. I am a big fan of a cushion or 50, but believe it or not, I did actually rein in my cushion loving ways to style this bed. So I went for two standard pillows at the back. They're the ones for sleeping on, the only ones that matter. And then three square cushions following on from those and then finishing off with one large lumbar cushion at the front. So it's layered but not too much, and it's not an overcomplicated cushion arrangement for anyone that feels like they need or want to put the cushions back, which can I just say for any potential guests out there, it is not at all expected that you put the cushions back in their correct order. I added a black wooden stool as a bedside table to one side with a smallish lamp, but I haven't repeated this on the other side because I wasn't sure that I wanted it to look completely symmetrical and so matchy-matchy. So I've just for now left the other side as it is, and that can be something that I can just tinker around with over the next few weeks. And I added some finishing touches to make it feel just a little bit more cozy. So I've got some baskets which are woven seagrass. So they bring a little bit more warmth to the room along with some natural textures. I also had some frames which I bought in the Zara home sale over the festive period. And I bought some printable art off Etsy. I'll link all of this down below in the description box for anyone that's interested. And I had those printed onto a textured paper to give them more of a vintage look. And then I hung these in the window alcove so that the black frames can be seen from one angle, sort of as you enter the room, and the light frames can be seen from the other angle, so if you were in bed. Now, I might add some more art to the room at a later date, but again, that's a little detail that I can sort of work on and tinker with as and when. Now, earlier you saw us install the electric blind, which by this point had been opening and closing perfectly, according to the schedule that I set up on the app but I'm also adding a neutral striped sheer voil panel on an extendable cafe rod to the window area. And this is, I think, more so for me and purely to disguise the mahogany leaded window, which I just don't like looking at and it very much ruins the neutral and serene vibe of the room. So this was just a quick 
and temporary fix. The plug sockets were then changed over to new matte black ones and a toggle light switch added in as well. We've used these toggle switches throughout all the rooms that we've redone so far in this house. We've added new black hinges and hardware to all the doors. So the main door into the room, the built-in cupboard slash wardrobe door, and the little doors into the eaves storage space. I bought these motion sensor rechargeable strip lights for inside the wardrobe just for a bit of extra visibility when it's dark and I also changed over the rail inside the wardrobe to a black one and added some black wooden hangers. Now as I mentioned earlier this is an additional TV in the house as we only had one TV in our TV area. We don't have one in the lounge, we don't have one in our bedroom or in any of the other rooms. So this will come in handy if Simon is watching football and I want to escape that and maybe go and have a binge and watch some Netflix. And of course, as mentioned at the start of the video, this is where Simon can play his PlayStation in peace and quiet. And here we have the finished result. It's got a much lighter and warmer and more cozy feel to it in comparison to the dark wood flooring and the blue walls from before. It's definitely a room which I'll now be proud to offer any of our friends and family to stay in. And it's also a room which Simon and I can get use out of more comfortably now, whether that be Simon playing PlayStation or me coming up here to escape the football and binge some Netflix. Now, I'd like to thank Emma Sleep for partnering up on this video and giving all of our future guests a great night's sleep. And just a reminder of that additional 5% off discount code, which is valid on top of the sale prices that you will see in their current winter sale. Thank you as always, guys, for watching and I shall see you next time.